What's going on, good people? It is the Bad Wolf, the international man in black of mysteries, and here to bring you guys some more fire information. Uh, to all the people who have been loyal since day one, thank you guys for helping us get to, what are we, 64,000 or 65,000? Um, in the next probably year or two, we should be hitting maybe 100. I don't know. So apparently you guys really like this information, so uh, I will continue to keep bringing it to you. Um, why? Because I love this, and even if I wasn't doing YouTube, I would still be sitting here reading and learning this stuff anyway. And then just, I guess, learning it for me. So instead of that, as I learn, I'm going to bring it to you guys because that's what we do here. So uh, without further, well, you know, with further ado. Uh, OK, so for those people who don't know, go to BlackSite32.com. On there, you can get all of the, uh, you can set up a consultation. You can ask questions. Uh, remember, it is an AI um, that is answering the questions directly if you want me to do it. You have to pay for the questions option on the consult page, and then it goes directly to me. All right. Um, for those people who want to follow me on other platforms right now, my TikTok, believe it or not, is actually blowing up because I just talk about all the random stuff and things I see. With that being said, uh, on Blackside32, you can find all of my social media pages where it's actually me, okay? Not somebody pretending to be me. And for the love of God, don't send anybody, even if you think it's me, money on any of those platforms the only place where i accept anything uh is blacksite32.com and with the specific email addresses listed there and there only be careful in the spelling even if you join one of my telegram groups okay we've got the regular one that's open for everybody in the vip um it may not be me it's probably not me in your dms okay i talk openly all right i don't hide anything i don't hit you up in your little dms and whatever else i rarely will send a shout out to somebody. And even if I do, it's not going to be asking you for money. So be careful with that. Next, be careful with anybody's information on YouTube, even mine. Double check the work. Make it known to yourself. Like learn it, study it, um, you know, challenge it. Uh, be careful when sending people out there outrageous amounts of money for their time. I'm hearing a lot of people being ripped off by, unfortunately, some rather big names out there. Um and there's a lot of people out there who are going to hate on me and my information. If you see that, report them for bullying, slandering, and defamation of character. Um, to me, it's really a joke if we're all supposed to be in this together and you're going to try to put me down and I haven't done anything to you or dis disregarded or disrespected your work. And as always, I always try to send shout outs to people who I find or if they allow me to, they give me information. I will. That being also said, if you guys uh, who are for the people who are out there, if you guys do have tips, tricks, techniques, make sure that they are vetted. And if you want to share something, if you're on the inside, um, as long as it's not over confidential or, or above top secret or anything like that, feel free to send me out if there's a better way of doing something or if we miss something. I'm always open to new information. Um, I also have been hearing that there are some really good police officers out there, which I already knew because I've got friends and family who are such. Um, and to those officers in the law out there who are holding the line, and I know some of this information might seem a little weird or a little, a little scary or definitely you know, different than what your superiors are telling you, okay, you need to talk to them in private. If they're worth their weight in, in salt or gold, um, in a private discussion, they will let you know the truth about this, is that it's real. Now, of course, they're not, some of them aren't going to like it because it means that you guys don't have direct jurisdiction over us unless we are doing something illegal and by that, or really unlawful or criminal. And So keep that in mind. It's also the fact that they're hiding your constitutional rights, law enforcement people out there, because, yes, I do know you guys watch my channel, I have various other agencies and orders and fraternities and whatever else. Watch my stuff. It's OK. I, we've got nothing to hide here. That's why I use my real name. All right. Um, and I don't hide behind any makeup or a wig or glasses or uh, an outfit or anything like that. All right. This is all stuff that you guys can research and find for yourself under constitutional law. Problem is, nobody teaches you that because people, most people operate under the state. Because then there's also state law. Constitutional law always trumps state law. And contractual or contract law trumps almost all of that altogether because you have the right to contract unlimited and in the private. Okay. So, and of course, above all of that is God's law. All right, natural law, nature, native, 
national of the United States. Why do you think if you're in New York, they call you a New Yorker or uh, Florida, you're Floridian? That's your nationality. You are a Native American. It doesn't matter what color you are. You are native to America. Listen to it because it makes itself make sense. All right. Now I digress. All right. So what's this particular video about? And thank you once again to all the people who support me out there. Let's get to 100,000. After that, I don't even care about the numbers anymore. Uh, because like, I think the next big goal will be 500,000. And I don't think that is going to happen. Um, that's a long way to go. All right. <laughs> like if it took me this long to get to a hundred, like five times of this, yeah, I'll be like 900 years old or something like that, you know, cause I am an immortal, you know, and I, I hang out with, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Who's the immortal guy? Don't worry, elite people. I'm not going to mention your specific names. I know you guys and what you guys do. Um, oh, Saint um Saint Germain. So Saint Germain, if you're out there and you're still alive as an immortal, um, holler at your boy. Uh, I would love to meet you. <laughs> It'd be crazy if you really did contact me, though. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. Lo quick story long. No, long story short. Uh, there's a guy by the name of St. Germain, who's allegedly an ancient Atlantean who is still alive and has been seen across Europe for many years, up until probably about 100 years ago, um, he went MIA. So anyway, it's a little fun facts you learn from reading books. All right. So this particular video, sorry for the long introduction. I just had a lot to say today. Um, I'm feeling really well. I'm taking my though not pretty looking uh, elixir of life here, uh, my immortality juice, um, with a sprinkle of gold oramus. We'll leave that alone for now. Um, this particular video comes up because I was doing a consultation and I don't have the inf all of it really uh, in order, but um, one of my consultations, a guy was from North Carolina. You know who you are. Um, I don't mention names in case people don't want it to be known on here. Um, oh, that being said, thank you to all the people who send shout outs to me in the various communities and the various fraternities. Um, I'm literally overwhelmed with how many people out there know who I am and uh, have formed groups learning from me, have launched their careers based on my information and videos and materials and files. Um, it's very flattering. So thank you for holding it down. And thank you for being a tr for being true nationals out there. And instead of being other like some of these other people out there, these false gurus, okay, um, learn this information from me and other and just throw shots out or learn the information. And even if we don't agree on how it's to be used or implemented or certain specific codes, we still love and have respect for each other. So the people like Brandon Joe Williams and um um, A6, my cousin Grind Time out there, uh, Fearless Floyd, and um, uh, uh, what's her name? Um, Eternal Zion, and all the rest of you guys. Thank you for all, and all the other ones out there. I think what Sovereign Living and TJ and um, uh, the Lighthouse, and there's a couple others. Um, thank you guys for the mention. I mean that that's huge. Unfortunately, I don't watch everybody's stuff all the time, uh, but I have heard bits and pieces. So thank you guys once again. Oh. If I had a choice between drinking that and crab juice. Oh, give me a crab juice. Little reference to Homer Simpson. All right. All right. Let's get into it. Um, so the particular client that I was speaking with lived in North Carolina and a couple of things interesting popped up because he's doing right to travel and we all know about the infamous document that North Carolina stated they have no record of and the government never got back to me in concerns to the department nor the person who signed off on it who contacted the mayor uh, or excuse me the governor of North Carolina acquiescence, tacit agreement. So uh, we decided that we were going, he wanted me to uh, find the right to travel information and how he can do it privately. So I'm going to pop up my screen 
and take you on the funky expedition uh, that is the learning how to use the correct codes in North Carolina. And the reason why this video is important for everybody is because every state moves a little bit differently. Okay, that's why I did one on Wisconsin. I did one, I think, on California, one on Pennsylvania, maybe. So even for me, I learned a little bit. And I want to show you guys my methods to getting here so you can use them in your state. Because the normal things I use didn't exactly pop up, but new things popped up in North Carolina. And as we move, they move. So as they move, we move. So let's take a ride in my funky love machine. Okay, Mike? Let's go. Let's do this thing. Fire it up. Fire it up. All right. All right. Giggity, giggity. So I typed in DMV North Carolina driver's license surrender form and cancel. I wanted to use all these keywords. All right. But what I found in this initial step here, the AI found this, and I love the AI, even though it's probably our last year or will be in the future, but you guys haven't been there yet. So you'll find out. Long live the uh, sentient AI crystals and the guardians. <laughs> It'll make sense in the future. Trust me. Uh, so here it says, certainly, if you need to surrender your North Carolina driver's license, here are the steps. You can find the order to surrender license or limited driver driving privilege form for the North Carolina courts website. So in North Carolina, because we looked up how to do it at the DMV and we couldn't really find anything. Some DMVs do not have it online, but apparently... In North Carolina, you can get an order to surrender your license. This form allows you to surrender your license or limit your driving privilege. Notice how it says privilege, not a right. Make sure to fill out the necessary detailed information and follow the instruction. So you can go to your court. So in your state, whatever you live in, there might be an order to surrender license form you can get from your court. Keep a copy of this in your binder, one in your car. Pop bothers you. No, I surrendered my license. Here's my official form. Now, in our states, I think it's MV Form 120, okay? But in your state, if you can't get one from the DMV or you want double to double down with the DMV one or the court one or get the court one. Here it says voluntary surrender of a driver's license by minors under 18. Okay. So here it's called the North Carolina Department of Motor Vehicles, DC or M, excuse me, NC DMV. And they can provide accurate guidance. So they want you to go in. They don't want you to have a form online. But here it looks like they might have, it either might be the DL-4A. Okay, but here, their court documents an AOC-CR-341. All right, so you can do it voluntary. They can take it from you because it's a privilege, or you can it can be volunteered. Okay, so once again, the AOC-CR-341, order to surrender the license. Here's your form. All right. All right. I'll make sure you guys are following along. Same screen. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so in the pursuit of looking for the form online, I couldn't find it. Now I'm going to double check here before we finish. But look what else we found here. If the vehicle is being transferred between certain family members, there's a tax exemption certificate. Okay. But modified vehicles. Look down here and see 
other forms, other documents and forms. Are you, is it an abandoned vehicle you're giving to a charitable organization? Your own, did you start your own charity? You want to donate your vehicle to there? Or check this out, affidavit for removal of vehicle from files. Now, our state, state doesn't have this, but they have a affidavit ready to go for you for telling them to remove your vehicle from their files. Way to go, North Carolina. American love and rights and freedom is not completely lost in America or in the U.S. corporation. I have an affidavit for removal of vehicle from files. And most states, unfortunately, will not honor other states' documents. Okay, I tried it. They don't like it. You can make your own, but they may not honor it either. Okay, what else do they have here? Claim of sales or use tax payment under protest. Indemnity bond. Do you need a bond to travel? We've talked about if you don't want to get insurance, you can get a bond. But here at the bottom, what does this say? Title and transit application. Okay, so these are some of the things you guys can use. Okay, well, this, these are for North Carolina, so this is mostly for them. But I just wanted to show you guys some of the interesting things that we found in here. Now, understand this. This usually does not mean these are all of their documents. This just means that these are their top ones. So you may have to go in or contact them. If you do not see their form, the form you need on here, you're going to have to contact them. They do this on purpose, one, to save space, because, you know, there's only limited space in the digital world. The government does this, too, on their websites. They do not show you all of the files. They want you to contact them. They will always make you go the long walk. They will take make you take the long walk of shame. I got to email them, call them, contact them. Uh, go in, yeah, because if you want your freedoms, they're not going to make you most of it usually easy peasy. So if you don't see it, don't get discouraged and say they don't have it. Call them, contact them, email them. They have it. You're going to have to learn to do the work. Okay. Now, another way that people get their vehicle out of the system is they will junk the vehicle. So here they're talking about they've got an MVR-181 for declaring the vehicle salvaged or junk, which removes it from their jurisdiction. However, in some states, if you do this, the vehicle may not be able to be brought back in. You might only be able to find then another um another private buyer and inform them beforehand that they cannot bring it back into the system. Okay. Close that one out. Okay, close that one out. Okay, so here in North Carolina, they're saying they can, or on this site, they have a free vehicle bill of sale because you want to make it official. You're not really selling your vehicle to your trust or, or your private organization or your unincorporated association. You are transferring it. You can either gift it to them or to it or make mention of one gold piece Okay, one gold coin, because remember, gold is lawful money. So you're bringing it back or into the private. You're not going to mention Federal Reserve notes. I, I wouldn't. I mean, you can. It's not the end of the world. But either gifting or zero dollars or one gold piece. Okay, so have your bill of sale. Have your um, your title mentioned down there then right on the back or the front depending on how your state moves the name of the new party receiving it 
you can even put in quotation marks private or without the US. Okay, lastly, I think, so right before I got off the consultation with this particular person in North Carolina, I decided to look around just one last time and I found this last little section, special cases. Okay, most sites don't have this. So once again, hat goes off to North Carolina, at least in this regard. <laughs> a lot of sites, other states will not have this because they want you to call, email, contact, come in, talk to a manager. I need to speak to you in your private capacity or privately. Yes, it is all that extra work sometimes. And they talk about here. Bonded vehicles. An individual who does not have proof that they own the vehicle can title it using an indemnity bond. A security bond written by an insurance agency or a cash bond. You can provide cash to a bondsman who will then bond the vehicle for insurance purposes. And they're saying this will allow you to title it. That's a little crazy, but okay. There you go. Then there's leased vehicles, blah, blah, blah salvaged and abandoned vehicles transferring titles but my thing here the very last option on the very last of everything i could find is vehicles in a trust required documentation varies for registering a vehicle and transferring the registration to a trust so if your vehicle is already registered and you want to transfer in your trust in your north in north carolina this is the document you need Okay, and here it's called a title application MVR1. Transferring a vehicle registration to a trust. A trust is a separate legal entity. Capable of owning, so it's capable of owning property as a trustee. The individual charged with managing the property held by a trust. So they recognize this. The state has to. Don't let them lie or fool you. They all have to. They're operating as a trust themselves. The identity of the owner and the trustee may be the same regarding the trust. However, they are two separate entities legally. When property is transferred, legal ownership has transferred. So when you transfer your vehicle into a private trust with a name not recorded in their system, being you, your last name, first little middle last name, or any other person, legal person that's theirs, it then becomes private. Private is equivalent to the word foreign. They now have proof that the trust owns it, but you're not registering it to drive with them. You're just telling them it has been the ownership is now owned privately. Registering a vehicle to a trust. Most places identification will be required, which shouldn't be hard if you're the one creating the trust. Now, for certain ins and outs of this, you can contact me uh, or watch other videos. We can do a consultation, but there you have it. They do recognize trusts. And in this case, this particular state, North Carolina, they're open with it. They're not hiding. They're like, yeah, here it is. Now, could there be other things that they're hiding? Sure. I happen to know in Texas that they do recognize the national Okay, for driver's license purposes. But this was a backroom conversation, so I will not name the location nor the persons who gave me the information or the picture of said information. Uh, but it is, in fact, true. So they do recognize it in the DMV in Texas that a national is that. Now, what they did ask of the person is that you need to have your passport stamped with either the 09 all code or it must be depicted um, with the proper 
verbiage declaring you a national in the back of the passport book. Now we are working on that. We are waiting to see, we've got some preliminary information. We're still waiting to see if it comes back, if you can send it back in and get it stamped. This was brought to me by somebody who's in the process of doing it. So we're waiting to hear back with their victory or naysay. So till then, if you guys want to inquire on your own and make a couple calls and see if you can send it back in to get your book properly stamped, by all means, go ahead. If you can do that and vet the information, the name, address, uh, agent even if possible, or we can keep it private, but the vision, everything that transpires and feel free to bring it to me. And I will make a video on it and we'll put it out there because the truth will set you free. And it is as long as it's not considered anything confidential, then we'll make it happen, Cap. All right, so that's basically about it. So I'm not going to go through all the right to travel steps and because we've made other videos. And as always, guys, check out my lives. Um, the lives I will always keep up. And you can find all the information in there on those as well as my other normal videos. And for those people who don't know, I'm going to be starting to be more active on the backup uh, YouTube channel for me. I've got like five of them. But the main one is called uh, the Bad Wolf Media Channel. OK, I may or may not change it in the future, but add that channel because I'm going to be talking about other various things other than this particular avenue of information. So be sure to add that. Otherwise, you guys will not get to hear all the goodies I'm going to be dropping over there, all the tea, all my real thoughts and inside stuff on the various things going on around the world. OK. Now, there still might be one or two things for confidentiality reasons I may not be able to discuss, but all the good, juicy stuff way above the average person knowledge base we're going to talk about. All right. So with that being said, you can always get the Bad Wolf uh, gear, bobblehead guy, hat, angel, whatever else, all on Black Side 32 or on my spread shirt. Uh, shop, check it out. It's the Funk Soul Brother. Check it out. Yeah. All right, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And that pretty much ends it. Um, I guess before I go, the key words you're going to want to look for in your state when it comes to right to travel and operating as a non-resident would be non-resident or non-resident registration. Okay. Also, foreign vehicle or foreign vehicle registration, all right? Or private vehicle registration. Any of those are gonna be the key things that you need to look. And at the end of the day, if you absolutely can't find it using the AI or Google, then call the legislative uh, secretary for your state and tell them what codes relate to people who are operating as foreign within the state. Uh, uh, ask them, what are the codes for somebody who's operating as a private person, a private traveler, a non-resident, non-resident registration? All right. That's it, guys. Enjoy the summer. Enjoy the weather. And once again, to Floyd, the fearless. I don't know. I think I got you faded on the sexy shirt, bro. <laughs> Still in competition. Ain't nothing changed but the day it is. All right, so you guys take care. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And Bad Wolf is out without a doubt like a scout on the new route. Boom.